Today marks a milestone for American women. On this date 100 years ago, most American women were granted the right to vote. Today, President Trump said he would pardon Susan B. Anthony posthumously. Susan B. Anthony was a women's suffragist. She was arrested in 1872 for voting illegally in the presidential election. She was sentenced to a $100 fine and court cost. If you're wondering, that would amount to about $2,100 today. Trump said at an event at the White House today that she was never pardoned. What took so long? Well, when it comes to the 19th Amendment, some Idahoans could say, America, what took you so long? While one prominent Idaho senator said, not so fast. Long before 1920, when local newspapers celebrated the ratification of the 19th Amendment with headlines and articles, Idaho women worked valiantly to ensure a woman's right to vote. Here's a picture from the 1880s, courtesy of the Idaho State Archives. A line of women marching on a dirt road, holding flags and umbrellas for a suffrage parade in Lewiston. Following them is a line of men and boys. As a state, Idaho extended suffrage to women in 1896, becoming the fourth state in the nation to grant most women in Idaho with the right to vote. Idaho Senator William Bora supported the movement in Idaho, but opposed a national suffrage amendment, insisting it was an issue best left to the states. Bora writing, I would rather give up the office than to cast a vote I do not believe in. That implored Carrie Chapman Catt, president of the National American Women's Suffrage Association. She coordinated a campaign against Bora's re-election bid. Petitions from Idaho constituents poured into Bora's office, and Republican Party leaders began to worry that Bora's position would damage party prospects. Even former President Teddy Roosevelt wrote a personal note to Bora, encouraging him to reconsider his position. Women were making their voices heard. And for the first time, the typically self-confident Bora had reason to worry about potential defeat, according to the U.S. Senate archives. In desperation, Bora met with suffragist Alice Paul. But Paul was desperate, too. Suffragists needed two more votes to pass the suffrage amendment in the Senate. Bora led Paul to believe that he would vote for the suffrage amendment. But on February 10, 1919, Bora betrayed Alice Paul and Idaho suffragists and voted no. The suffrage amendment fell by one vote short of the required two-thirds majority. The battle was lost, but the war continued. By June 1919, suffragists had the votes they needed. The amendment passed. Now it would be up to the states for ratification. Illinois, Wisconsin, and Michigan quickly approved the national suffrage amendment, and other states steadily followed. On August 18, 1920, Tennessee became the 36th state to approve, and the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified. The women's suffrage amendment had taken decades of hard work and sacrifice on the part of the suffragists across the nation and here in Idaho. And thanks to their efforts, women voted in national elections for the first time in the fall of 1920. What about that second vote? The second time around in June of 1919, senators approved the national suffrage amendment with just two votes to spare. That's how close it was. So how did Senator Bora vote the second time around? The director of the Bora Foundation and Symposium at the University of Idaho says Bora more than likely voted no again.